Our next topic is describing lines and planes, primarily in three-dimensional space, using vectors. So ultimately, we want to come up with a vector description of lines and planes in R3. But before we do that, let's just revisit familiar lines in R2. So here I have the graph of y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So that's a line of slope negative 1 half with a y-intercept of 1. I'm now going to give you a different description for this line using vectors. To write down a vector equation for this line, the first thing we need is to identify a point we know. I could pick the y-intercept, but let me pick this other point I know lives on this line. So I'll let p naught be the point negative 2, 2. If p naught is the point negative 2, 2, then that means its position vector is the vector negative 2, 2. In our line notation, we'll call this position vector r naught. They have the same coordinates. It's just a slight distinction between what kind of object it is. So p naught is the point, r naught is the vector which starts at the origin and lands on the point p naught. Let's see, what else do we need for a line? Well, if you think about our familiar equation, negative 1 half x plus 1, the plus 1 corresponds to a point we know. And the negative 1 half, that's the slope. That gives us a sense of direction. It tells you how to move away from a point to travel along the line. So we also need what we call a direction vector. So v is going to be any vector which lays along this line. I'll sketch one over here. Let me also label my position vector for my known point here. So it's like we have an anchor point and a sense of direction. With these two pieces of information, we can write down what's called the vector parametric equation of the line passing through this known point with this direction vector v. And that's going to be r equals the position vector r naught plus t times the direction vector v. This coefficient t here is what we call a parameter. And the values of t are any real number, which you could write as t is a real number. So that's t is an element of the set of real numbers. Or you could think of it as t ranges from negative infinity to infinity. Since the right-hand side depends on a choice of t, I will often actually denote the left-hand side as r of t to show that this is depending on t. Notice what we're looking at here. This is a sum of two vectors. So r0 is a vector. t v is a scaled vector. So it's the vector v scaled by t, and then we add these together. So let me see what the result of this vector addition would look like if t equaled, say, negative 3. OK, so if t equals negative 3, I'm going to take this vector right here and add to it the vector v stretched by a factor of 3 and pointing in the opposite direction. So let's see, that vector is going to go like this. OK, so this is the vector negative 3 v. So here it's like t equals negative 3. The way we've made this diagram, we are perfectly positioned to now do the vector addition of this first vector, this position vector, plus negative 3v. Because notice, we're going to start at the tail of the first one, connect to its head the tail of the second one, and then our vector sum will go from the origin here, the tail of r0, to the head of negative 3v. So this vector is what you could think of as r of negative 3. So what we notice here is that the left-hand side r, or r of t, corresponds to the position vector of a point on this line. So you pick any value of t, do this vector sum, and that's going to take you to a point on the line. Conversely, if you pick any point on the line, there's a value of t so that that point could be decomposed as r0 plus t times v for these two fixed vectors r0 and v. Let me give myself a bit more room, and then I'll write down the actual vector description of this line. OK, so for this example, the vector parametric equation of the line passing through the point negative 2, 2 with the direction vector v is negative 2, 1 would be r of t equals negative 2, 2. So here I'm writing the position vector for our known point plus t times negative 2, 1. Now I can simplify the right hand side and add this coordinate by coordinate. So we're going to get negative 2 plus negative 2t. So negative 2 minus 2t and 2 plus 1t. So this is a parametric equation for the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. For different values of t, we're going to get the position vector pointing to, to points on this line. If I let t equal 0, we get the position vector for the point negative 2, 2. That's where we started. 
If I plug in t equals 1, then we're going to get negative 4, 3. If I plug in t equals negative 1, then we get 0, 1. If I plug in negative 2, we get 2, 0. I plugged in whole numbers there, but you could have plugged in any number you like. You're going to get taken to a point on this line. Let me now switch over to a demonstration I made in Desmos for this line. Okay, so now I'd like to show you a demonstration of how this vector equation of a line works for the line we've been looking at, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So that's the line pictured here. I'm going to start with an anchor point p naught. Say that's here at the point negative 2, 2. So that's the point I know lives on the line. We associate to this point its direction vector, which will denote r naught. So this is the vector that starts at the origin and ends at the point p naught. Then also for my line, I have a direction vector. So this vector v, I'm going to draw on my line. This gives me a sense of direction. So it's pointing along the line. So as we look at this demonstration, we want to imagine that these circles that you see are like the heads of the vector. So that's where I would typically draw an arrow. Then the parametric form for our vector equation of a line is r of t equals r naught plus t v. The idea is that for different values of t, this is going to send us to different points along the line. So let me now show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to start with t equals zero. In our equation, if we plug in t equals zero, we're just taken back to the familiar vector that we already know, r naught. Now let me slide t up to one. When we do that, what we're going to do is land at the vector r naught plus v. By vector addition, that's going to start at the origin, the tail of r naught, and end at the head of v. So that's this new vector r of t that you see here. Okay, now I'm actually going to take away the line in the back so that you can see how sliding the values of t up and down, we're gonna let t be any number, traces out this line. Okay, so now that I've removed the line, you can really see the vector addition taking place. r of t is r naught plus t times v. Let's now explore different values of t. Okay, so from our current t value of one, I'm going to go to a t value of about 3.4. What this is doing is stretching the vector v, but at every step we're doing vector addition. So notice we're tracing out the line towards the left. For any value of t, like the current value t equals 3.4, r of t is the position vector starting at the origin and pointing out to the line according to the vector addition of r naught plus t times v. So here it's our position vector r naught for our known point p naught plus 3.4 times the given vector v, the direction vector for the line. Now I'm going to go in the other direction. When t is negative, you can see that we're going to point in the opposite direction of v. So here r of t is r naught plus t times v, but we've, in this case, flipped v and stretched it by a factor of four. So this is what this vector equation of a line does. It gives us a parametric description for the position vector of any point on this line. So r of t is a vector which starts at the origin and ends on the line. And for different values of t, what we do is we trace out this line. I hope this demonstration made it clear how the vector addition works. So anytime you see a vector equation, here we have a sum of vectors equaling another vector, see if you can sketch how the vector addition shapes out what you expect. Let's finish this discussion by looking at the scalar parametric equations for this line. Scalar parametric equations you find by looking at the equations for each coordinate. So notice that the first coordinate, negative 2 minus 2t, this corresponds to the x coordinate. The second coordinate, 2 plus t, this is the y coordinate. So the scalar parametric equations for this line are x equals negative 2 minus 2t and y equals 2 plus t. Each of these are scalar quantities. So x is just a number, y is just a number. So that's why we call these scalar equations. We can combine these equations to actually return back to our starting equation for this line, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. To do that, I want to substitute the first equation into the second equation somehow in order to have y and x together, but no instance of t. So notice, t is x plus 2 divided by negative 2. That comes from the first equation. So I just move this negative 2 over, so x plus 2, and then divided by the coefficient negative 2. 
the second equation tells me that t is y minus 2. So again, there I just solve for t. So we put these together and we're going to get x plus 2 divided by negative 2 equals t equals y minus 2. So let me just write equals y minus 2. Now simplify this equation as much as you can. So the negative 2 comes over, you get negative 2y plus 4. Simplify some more and you'll end up with y equals negative x over 2 plus 1. So this tells us that our new vector description of this line is consistent with our original algebraic description of this line.